Hello, there's been some new additions to the sewing studio. I got a printer and I got a Cricut, which means I'm kind of running out of space to put all my different arts and crafts supplies. As many of you saw, this is where I keep all my fabric. And though I have this fancy sausage roll system that helps me see all of the fabric, there's no escaping the fact that I just, I cannot buy any more fabric. I'm sorry to put that energy out there, but this is my truth. Unless, of course, I use up my fabric and make space, and then I can buy some more. There is a dress pattern that has been haunting my feed. Keep that word in mind, haunting. And so with my new printer and my fabric scraps, it is time to take the first step towards giving ourselves permission to buy more fabric. Oh boy. So this is definitely, at least in my experience, on the more expensive end of patterns. Though I do recall back when I worked at Fabricland, I would like flip through the different pattern books and the Vogue ones, sometimes I feel like they would cost like a hundred bucks and that obviously doesn't even include any of the raw material. Sewing by a pattern. I feel like it's similar to baking in that People who say they're bad at baking are just actually bad at following instructions. I'm sorry, is this controversial to say? <laughs> the comparison is that sewing patterns also come with a lot of instructions, which you should read carefully. I actually have already messed that up because <laughs> I bought the wrong size. I didn't pay attention to the fact that it was in UK sizing. Uh, anyways, let me know if you guys like to sew from a pattern or without a pattern. After pressing print on the correct size, Leticia is helping me assemble and cut the pattern paper. It is designed for three fabrics, but this pattern is intended to be cut from remnants from your other projects, and thus, I'm actually gonna try to make it work for four fabrics. For that, I'm gonna need a plan. Sorry, pause. One more thing we need to check before we cut the pattern. Scaling box. Yes, we're good. I don't know if you guys can tell, but the bows seem to be the highlight feature of this dress. So I have color coded this top half to distribute the fabric in a way that highlights the bows. And I color coded the skirt. I tried to give these larger pieces to the fabric that I have more of because yes, I want to use up my scraps, but I want to like somehow hit this perfectly so that I don't accidentally run out and then have to buy more fabric, which would completely defeat the purpose. This is how it all translates onto a flat sheet. I've got top, sleeves, skirt, all color-coded based on the exact layers and numbers and fabrics I need to cut out. I'm pretty sure there's like 108 pieces here, so that's exciting. Now we're gonna cut everything out, hope that my guesstimating was good enough to use up just the right amount of scraps. There is also this extension kit that makes it midi length, whereas I think this dress is knee length. That's pretty cute. And there's also a hack to make the button up in the back. Okay, I'm gonna see how I feel about these modifications. Maybe we'll just keep it simple. <laughs> there's nothing simple about this. This is like such a hard pattern. I had this other color combination that I was considering. If you guys remember this black brocade and blue brocade from two previous projects, have this blue satin, have this like cool little multicolored sheer thing. On the Roberts Wood Instagram, I actually saw a lot of really cute options in linens. It's like a very cottagey look, florals, all very tempting, but I will stay the course. I'm sticking to pink. I will show you at the end why. This would be a bad day for a tornado. <laughs> I mean, I mean, there's no such thing as a good day for a tornado. The basic principle for the construction of the dress is to assemble the patches first into rows and then ah, attach all the rows together. I have a left front bodice. Oop. There are a couple of different ways that the instructions suggest putting them together. I've decided I'm going to go with a straight stitch, then overlocking the edge, then a top stitch. This is the most tedious of all the options that it offers, but it will look the neatest and I am, I'm a sucker for it looking nice. I did forget to get the overlock thread, so today I'm just gonna pound through some straight stitching. Okay, now I just do this 400 times.
I have been doing a little nifty thing, which is instead of the plain straight stitch, I'm over here on number five, and this one starts and ends the stitch for you with a little back stitch, which is just saving me like the slightest bit of button pressing. Every bit counts. All the bodice rows are done. Leticia helped me press them so that all of the seams lie in the direction that I want. That actually went much faster than anticipated. I'm gonna work on the sleeves. Down here you can see a little extra, but personally I just make it a goal for the internal edge to be fully aligned since they have to touch each other, whereas out here you can always trim it to make it a smooth line at the top and the bottom of the sleeve. I have here the right sleeve, he <laughs> kind of looks like a fish. Over here, left sleeve, glub glub glub. That means all of the rows for the top are done and it's been two hours, so I'm gonna do the skirt. Pav, you are about to sew 50 scraps together and by some miracle it is going to look beautiful. This really is the final boss of can you follow instructions. <laughs> Why did I make it so complicated? I need to alternate pink, orange, baby pink, gold, pink, rust, pink, orange, baby pink, gold. Oh my gosh, this last one is so much sewing. Instead of one, two, one, two, one, two, we are going one, two, 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 one, two. I am so curious to know, are you guys the type that do the hardest part first or kind of like warm up to it? I think the general conventional wisdom is that you should do the hardest part first and get it out of the way. Actually, I think I'm gonna call it a day today. We have to get ready because my sister-in-law, who is a huge Taylor Swift fan, she got us tickets to go see the Cineplex concert? Movie concert, in a theater. I have nothing to compare this to, so I feel like it's probably gonna be a great experience. I've never seen a concert film in a theater. And I'm going to wear some of you might remember this little number that was inspired by her Grammy dress from during the pandemic, I think, by Oscar de la Renta. Ta-da! Every single one of these flowers was hand-painted by one of my fave Toronto YouTubers, Amanda Rach Lee. I'll put the link in the description if you guys missed this video because she got a matching shirt too. I'm gonna message her and tell her I'm wearing it. The baby doll cut is not what I typically gravitate towards. I do feel like the cuteness of it is kinda T-Swift. Okay, see you tomorrow. We're back. On the weekend, Dan ran a marathon. I know he ran the marathon, but like I'm still tired and recovering from yesterday. So I'm just gonna enjoy a quiet day sewing. Okay. And now to overlock in pink. Earlier this year, we did an in-person workshop where we did a live flower pounding and embroidery and we handmade all of the handkerchiefs that people got to take home for it. And uh, I still have not cleaned my machine from that experience. Oh my. <laughs> oh my gosh. I dread doing this, but it's so satisfying. Let's go. Here's how they look with just my one straight stitch and pressed. I'm overlocking all of the raw edges, which is especially important for satin and brocade. They're so ugly when they fray. And to work smarter, not harder, I'm just doing all of the overlocking in one long chain. And then I go through and snip everything clean. It's just much faster when like you can stick to one tool for a period of time 
instead of switching gears. Here's how the seams look with all the edges wrapped. And now, like I said, I'm going to top stitch. Uh, uh, everything. It's actually even harder than just top stitching because some items I want to top stitch in light pink. Some items I want to top stitch in orange. Some items I want to top stitch in gold. Probably the hot pink and rust is going to come into play at some point. I have pre-gathered my little minions and I think I'm going to try to do all of one color at once so I don't have to switch the thread on the machine as often and not get my pattern pieces mixed up in the process. It's day three of working on this and I think we're still okay. Baby pinks first. Okay, wow, I did it. <laughs> Join the rows, ensuring you perfectly match up the vertical seams between the patches across the rows. I'm gonna start with the back. We have a yoke and three back rows. Ta-da! Joining these together. Like so, wow. This is my first time actually seeing a single panel assembled. I'm happy to see my bow design is shining through. Now to repeat for left front, right front, left sleeve, right sleeve, and the skirt. I'm doing the skirt and it is much more difficult than the top ones. There's kind of less landmarks to work off of for aligning everything. This pattern was rated, I think, for intermediate. And up until finishing this step with the top, I was like, I guess a very patient beginner could do this. But at this point, I think, yeah. This is getting tested. This is like, have your fingers gathered enough experience to know the feel of what tension you should be working with. Wow. So this wraps up all the rows. Now, once again, I will overlock all the raw edges and I've decided I will top stitch. I think it makes sense. Probably should press it first too. <laughs> it is day. Actually, I have no idea what day it is on this project. Put it here. Reflecting on how I thought I could maybe finish this in like, I don't know, three days. <laughs> And today we have made it to the step binding. Oh wait, also let me show you my little vest. <laughs> the bows are bowing. So this dress has no lining, which usually is the most invisible way to finish off things like the neck hole. And so the next most invisible way is with binding. This is cut from the patterns instructions as well. Leticia helped me put together. It's just three centimeters that have been pressed into a little brochure. I wonder what generation we'll get to where they won't know what a brochure is. Leticia, do you think Gen Z knows what a brochure is? Mm, maybe not the new ones. <laughs> <laughs> Marla will never know what a brochure is. I'm supposed to sew this guy around the neck to help finish it off and I'm supposed to create like a little front button stand. 
out of the excess fabric here. Let me show you what binding can do. So here is the raw neck hole. Here's the neck hole with the first stitch that attaches the binding. And here's the second stitch on the binding, which closes it off. I still have to do the front pocket, but I'm pretty happy with this. Although it is very difficult to choose the right color thread since my whole thing just keeps changing colors all the time. And I also need to press it so that this is just a little bit smoother. This last one is hard because I'm trying to catch this button flap blind, so I keep flipping the fabric to check if I got it. And I think I have it closed, fully bound neckline, sealed button flaps. It looks good. I think my last step here is I'm supposed to secure the bottom front together with a little stitch. This better fit because it closes at the waist. And then that makes sense because it's a loose fitting dress. But normally when you make a more fitted dress, you gotta like have the zipper go at least to the hips. Yeah. Okay, it's on. I also have the binding finished on the sleeves. Okay, we're finally ready to assemble. I really should have marked which sleeve is which. This is the right sleeve. Okay. Whew, you see me here struggling a little to get the ease just right on the sleeves, but do you see this? Do you see? It's the last step. Well, actually, I also have to hem the bottom edge of the skirt, but for some reason that never counts as the last step. Is now a good time to start a mini dress for Marla? Yes. <laughs> Are you watching, Marla? Yeah. Okay. Hi, Mommy. Hi. Hi, Mommy. Hi, Marla. It is 10.40 p.m. I think my body is like performing mutiny after following a pattern and trying to be diligent. I've been approaching making this dress for Marla in like the most chaotic way. Like I think I've done all the steps except for attaching the sleeve. And then also, of course, like I think I want to add like a little elastic here or something to give it a comfortable little cinch. Went with a lined top and an invisible zipper that I bought a long time ago and was too short to do anything except hopefully be the back of Marla's dress. This makes her look small. I actually worry I might have made this too short, in which case I, pl I could just like add a ruffle or something, I guess. Regarding my dress, when I was in Paris this summer, I got some DMs recommending a fabric, sewing notion, heavy neighborhood. Thank you so much for those. I picked up these super adorable strawberry and flower buns. Definitely gonna slap these babies onto one of Marla's outfits at some point. And I got these star buttons for Marla, but uh, I think I'm gonna have a go at them first and put them on my dress. I'm supposed to use four buttons in total. Next time you see me, I'm going to show you the finished dress and the occasion that I'm wearing it to. All right, in my latest studio tour video, I don't know which, where should I be looking? Why did I set up this shot? Some of you noticed in my studio tour video that the pieces of this dress were on the floor. I was working on it at the time. There are a few comments asking for my feedback on this pattern, whether or not you guys should make it, since obviously it's available online, you can purchase it yourself. And I think it's a great dress to make. You can see from this what it looks like in its original knee length. Let me know in the comments if you feel like you would do knee or the midi length. But now I'm gonna go get dressed up for the real reason I chose this dress to be the pink color scheme. You have to go to the real world. <laughs> I think I can get my splits higher. As you can see, I'm going as weird Barbie. I did borrow Birkenstock thanks to my friend David. I'm trying to figure out which heel to bring as the Barbie shoe while also trying to not turn Halloween into like, you just buy a bunch of stuff and then never use it again. Very proud of the dent I put in my scrap fabric collection. Don't forget to pop up in the description. I try to put all the relevant links there. If you guys have any recommendations for patterns that use scrap fabrics, please drop that in the description. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next sewing project. Bye bye.